So we're here at one of the first webinars in 2021. And today we're going to be talking about agency and client relationships. And we're lucky enough to have a really interesting bunch of people to talk about uh, that whole topic and also look a little bit about the way that value has changed in terms of what clients are looking for and how the pandemic has created something that isn't exactly normal in terms of the transformation and the way businesses are operating. So I'd like to welcome Debbie Morrison, who is the Managing Director of Global Partnerships for Ubiquity. Paddy Affleck, who is the CEO of Havas Media Group, and Zav Rees, who is the CEO of Havas London and Havas Helia. And I think we're going to have a bit of an interesting session. And the purpose of this is really to get a better understanding of how we as agencies uh, can do differently and what clients are looking for. So turning to you, Debbie, I mean, you have been at Ubiquity now for um, some time, and I would love to hear your point of view on what on earth this delightful 2020, and it appears to be going into 2021, has changed the way, you know, clients are looking for opportunities, the way agencies are operating, and what you've seen over the last year. Thanks, Tracy. Well, you know, as you know, I was at ISBAR for 29 years before I moved to Ubiquity two years ago. And um, during that time, I guess I, I saw the birth of marketing procurement. I've seen agencies split from um, creative, split from media agencies. I mean, there's been so much change in the sort of 30 plus years that I've been in the business. It, it's, quite in, it, it's quite interesting. Um, but since moving to Ubiquity two years ago, um, I, I have maintained our relationship with the procurement community and um, we noticed because of the exponential change that was already happening in the media marketplace that particularly for that audience they really needed uh, a home where they could come and talk about media issues um, in, a, in a sort of independent impartial environment uh, because they really didn't have anywhere else to go. So we, we've maintained a really strong link with them. And the last year has just uh, seen even more exponential change. Uh, there's been a huge change in consumer behavior. There's also been a lot of working from home, um, all challenging businesses in the way that they, they do things and, and, and really um, causing them to re-examine both their internal structures and their external relationships in, in order to deliver, to continue to deliver their services over this really peculiar time. So in a way, both um, marketers, procurement and um, agencies have had to be real shapeshifters and the um, clients that I've been talking to, I did a big series of interviews just before Christmas with CMOs and heads of procurement, really just to see what they'd learned from the last year and also what they were seeing going forward. And, you know, this, this need for agility was one of the, you know, the top priorities, uh, an acceptance that there really is no boundaries to talent anymore. You know, you're not confined you may work with a, a London agency but you're not confined to M25 talent you can draw on talent because because everything's gone virtual you can get talent from anywhere in the world from the network from wherever so that was an interesting one that they uh, that they highlighted a lot of people said that they had um, collaborated in much uh, greater depth with their agencies they've been thrown in together they really had to um, roll their sleeves up, reinvent, um, recreate a different model and way of working uh, in order to keep going. So um, it's really changed the nature of all relationships, I think. Virtual pitches is another thing that's happened. Again, overnight, we've had to reinvent the way pitches happen. And, and so things, you know, things didn't stop. They just shapeshifted and they became different entities. And so now a lot of my conversations with the client community are all about, wow, you know, actually we quite like some of the things that we've changed over this period. How do we keep them? How do we work with our agencies to, to recreate um, when we're all back in the office, this sort of more agile, more intuitive, more, um, collaborative way of working and you know I had some really great quotes from people who were so grateful to their agency networks for having you know just 
sat down and, and reinvented with them. It, it's been quite quite interesting. But I mean, I think now there are bigger challenges. You know, everybody's budget is being challenged. Um, I think I was at the ISBAR conference last week and we were hearing about the importance of um, effectiveness and measurement and how you know, you've know you got to prove what every um, pound that you're spending, dollar that you're spending in marketing is delivering. And I think that that takes us into a whole different environment. So I mean, those are just some of the things that I've seen. I think there's also, there's another group of people who, um, I've, I've heard this particularly from the procurement community, who have looked at the shape of what they had pre-pandemic, during pandemic, and realized that it, that's not right either. So I think there may be some pitches this year, which will be about transformation and really, you know, how can you um, put your relationships on a different footing? Maybe what they've got now is not the right shape for what they need going forward. There's just a few things, I see. hope that helps. I mean, that's really interesting. And I think, you know, listening to some of the words that you use there around shape-shifting and transformation, um, Paddy, you know, you joined during the pandemic. I mean, I think you started at Have Us back in the beginning of last year. So in essence, your whole journey at Have Us has been one that is through the implications of the changing working environment, the needs that uh, clients have to develop and adapt to what's been happening, mm -hmm. um, you know, clients having to pivot as a consequence of you know the challenges that we've seen very much preeminent across a significant number of sectors so from your perspective you know how have you seen the business change how has it transformed how has how has it become a shape shifter as, as Debbie mentioned I, I think just to um to echo some of what sort of Debbie um articulated I think we have seen the, the, the clients under a, a greater pressure. I think um, it's still interesting, believe it or not, speaking to some clients, that marketing is still sometimes regarded as a bit of a cost centre for them rather than a, a revenue generator, which means actually, particularly now in these conditions, there is almost more focus on remedia, immediate return on investment and short-term uh, kind of goals and so forth. Um, and I think also just the, to your point, Debbie, around accountability, Marketing is under the spotlight. You, we, we need to help them demonstrate that across every aspect of what they do in marketing, it is actually delivering growth for their business. And it's also at a time when actually their, their budgets are under huge amounts of scrutiny. So there is still an expectation of growth, but actually the budgets are either static or they're not increasing. So I think what we are also trying to do is just do a lot more work around helping them prioritize around the right KPIs that we believe will actually help them contribute to achieving those particular business goals. But I think the other thing that's that realized over this period is where, for example, a client had used us for a particular service, say in media, media planning and buying, actually their, their needs were, were changing and adapting. So actually suddenly they didn't require for argument's sake, loads of activation, say within the outdoor space for obvious reasons, but they did need to actually help around positioning their brand in the right way to a local community. So actually thinking about how we could help them position and talk to consumers in a more credible way within social environments suddenly became more of a pronounced need. And I think what we tried to do over the, over the period was almost just try and almost simplify our own structures a little bit, look at our existing scopes of work with our clients and just be much more flexible to go, right, actually, we need to just need to think about right now, you don't require that particular skill set. What you actually require is more individuals that are well-versed in this particular area that can offer real value to you at this given point. And I think that's what in a way, I'm actually quite excited by because this is the sort of model we want to move to, much more of this sort of idea of a fluid model where actually clients, based on their shifting needs, state, shifting challenges, you know, and this isn't going to change when we come out of the pandemic. All these new challenges have come up and are challenging them in, in, in a whole host of different ways which they've never experienced before, just requires different skill sets. And so we need to make it very easy for them to access those wide set of capabilities. And that capabilities could exist within the media operation, or they could exist within the wider have us group uh, sets of capabilities within our village. And, th and that's where I think it becomes quite exciting. And, and I don't know, it's something that stuck with me for, since he said it in 2016, which was Mark Pritchard said something along the lines of, frankly, your complexity should not be our problem. So we want to make sure that that complexity is made invisible. And I think right now with the pandemic, that is more pronounced and more real than ever before. And I think we need to show that we are not just policing and marshalling our existing scopes of work and being very rigid to that. We need to go, right, actually, if it requires a different type of strategist that I can borrow for argument's sake from 
Zav's team with an Helia, then let's just make it happen. And let's not worry about whether or not it belongs in that brand versus another. It's about actually being acutely aware of what our clients need, organizing ourselves around that to solve the challenges. Because I think that's what builds the stronger working relationships. And that's what we're trying to move towards much more. And that's a really interesting comment. The, you know, complexity shouldn't be our problem from, you know, a client perspective. And Sav, you know, it's it's all very well, you know, you've got you've got a number of different agencies that sit within, you know, Havas King's Cross. You've got many holding groups that have complexity in terms of the number of agencies they have. How do you think from you know, your perspective, you've built in that agility in terms of resourcing, in terms of building teams? Uh, in terms of removing the complexity? Yeah, I mean, it's interesting. You hear, we've heard words like shape-shifting, flexibility, uh, fluidity. Um, to a large extent, those are, you know, those are critical words, but they're critical because they're about the way we behave um, as, as well as the way we structure. And f- for me, it's, I mean, it's always been this question, but I think we're now able to answer it differently. What's the right team to build around a client? And instead of uh, where we would have been having multiple teams in different agencies, even if they were all within Havas, how do you create genuinely a single team that's right for the client uh, rather than a a team that uh, that's right for the way that we were historically structured or even right for the way we're structured now, you know, um, recently we worked, uh, worked on a pitch. It was for John West, which we, which we won. And, uh, and Paddy and I were sitting down talking about how we should structure that piece of business appropriately. And it's really clear to me that uh, well, it was clear to both of us uh, that we need, you know, you, you have to create a single team with a single leadership and that, the, the, that potentially the, the core team is, is smaller uh, and, uh, and that their job is to pull in the right people as and when you need them a little bit, as Paddy was talking about earlier. But one of the key decisions we made was, you know, was who's that person going to be that's going to be the single leader and, that, and then how does it all work? And I think the thing for me is that uh, it, maybe it sounds obvious, but there are three things that you really need to make this work. And one of them is real depth of specialist expertise um, to be able to pull in when, when you need it. There's no point in having, you know, being able to do it if you don't have the, the real experts to, to pull in. Uh, but, and I think we're lucky because we have that within the Havas Village setup. Uh, but ease of access, and again, you, Paddy, you touched on this, but uh, you have to make it simple, as simple as possible for that core team to pull in the right specialists uh, and the right resource when they need it, uh, why they need it, and so that it's not there when they don't, frankly, as well. So, so we've worked really hard to strip out processes that might get in the way of that so that you can move people around much more quickly uh, and get them to the point of need. Uh, and operate on the basis that, uh, you know, I, th- I think if anything has become really apparent over the last 12 months is that actually you, you're never, you can't quite predict what's coming next. What you can do is shape yourself to be able to respond quickly when it does come. That's what, what I really think about when I think of agility. How can we make sure that when the need is there, so if, if a client has a problem that, we, uh, that they bring to us and we, we need to work out how to deal with it, that we can, we can move the, the brilliant people we have within our organisation towards that problem uh, and then move them away again when it's solved so that they can go somewhere else. Now, that all sounds desperately easy, but that, you know, that requires real understanding of the processes that are going to get in the way and stripping them out, but also a, re- a, a real difference in attitude than maybe we've seen in agencies historically. And one of the things that I love about the Havas Village in particular is that is there's an innate spirit of collaboration uh, that's, that, uh, you know, and it's by design. I think we've hired people that have that within them but also because we don't have multiple agencies competing with one another. We sort of want one, one of everything. Uh, we all know that we're stronger together. So that culture fosters uh, you know, a desire to help and, and, and solve client problems rather than serve in individual agency entities. And all in the virtual space as well. So, I mean, no one's in the same room at the moment. So it's even more difficult. I mean, I don't, yeah, I mean Debbie, I had probably about two months of my time in King's Cross in the village 
everything else has been basically doing this across the screen. Um, and it's but, and it's and you get the te the interesting thing is is that you can then you don't know where people are, so you you actually can create the right team, whether it be people from the US, from APAC, from Europe. You know, you pull the talent in when and how you need it. Yeah. One one thing I just to, to build on and add further texture to what Zav was saying, I think we've we've got a number of shared clients across the media operation and shared with with London uh, and also Helia because we're much more aligned around our clients and their challenges. It's also giving rise and quicker rise to just kind of the developments of new capabilities. So we moved uh, sort of about eighteen months ago to doing a lot of stuff using the Google Cloud platform. But all that's doing actually is because we suddenly got engineers and data scientists attached to the people that are leading clients' business, that's suddenly identifying things that we just need to develop really quickly to help us get to quicker and faster decisions that improve business performance. Or it might be that Zav and our collective teams, we're all looking at, right, where are there gaps in our capabilities that we suddenly need to super serve yeah. and develop yeah. a solution for? And I think we are now quickly, but through this greater alignment around our clients going, right, we've got a gap here, but we actually do have capabilities. It's just hidden over here. How do we actually make that more pronounced for our clients? And I'm quite excited about that type of alignment that's coming from being much more organised around our clients' business. Thank you. And I think, you know, both both Zav and Paddy, you mentioned um, a recent win, which was an integrated win. I absolutely hate the word integration, to be honest, <laughs> because I think it's much overused. But the question that I get asked so regularly is, are there going to be more integrated pitches? Is that the trend? Is integration the new thing? Debbie, I'd love to know from your perspective, what is the word and what are clients actually looking for? <laughs> do you know what? I haven't got a clue because I remember yeah. at this bar, um, probably about 10 years ago saying, look, everything's going to go back into full service. It's too complex. You know, the whole Mark Pritchard thing. And now I just don't know. And I think it's, I think, I'm not sure that integration is a, is a good word here. I just think people want everything to work seamlessly, simply, in an agile fashion. It's just like, you know, help us grow our businesses and do whatever it takes. Use whatever discipline it takes. You know, there, there are no boxes around disciplines anymore, I don't think. I just think it's, you know, here's the brief. What does it take to make this, you know, to deliver this growth to our company? So, um, yeah, I guess I don't hear that much about integration, probably more about disintegration. So, you know, people taking different models, people doing a bit of their own stuff in house and coupling it with this over here and there. But I think it's more difficult if you're a client to try and orchestrate the whole um, caboodle um, across multiple agencies. I think, you know, what Mark Pritchard says is golden, you know, don't, we don't want the complexity, just show us the simple way to achieve what we need to achieve. And if you want to use the term integration, then fair enough. But um, I just think it's like, Deliver, help us deliver um, and, you know, do whatever it takes. You know, I really like the term you just use about we don't want boxes around discipline because that's certainly a goal. And it's what I think many, many agencies and many networks aspire to. But Zav, I'd love to know, I mean, I, you know, if I was sitting here as a client, you know, me turning to you or, or talking to Debbie and saying, I'm looking for an agency or a network that doesn't have boxes around discipline. That's not possible, is it? That's not something that agencies can actually deliver, really? <laughs> um, well, it's, well that's, that's an interesting way of phrasing the question, Tr Tracy, because, because I think, I think there are, it's clear that you have to foster brilliant specialist talent and you have to foster a culture where, where that's, those specialisms are really appreciated and people really want to excel within. So in some senses, you need to create centres of gravity, but if you box them in and they feel feel... Uh, separate from one another, then I think uh, you have a real problem. What clients want today is is both, you know, is effectiveness in terms of what we deliver for them, but they want it delivered efficiently as, as well. So we ask ourselves both questions. And so we know where our specialists uh, uh, within the building, uh, you know, are, and, and, they, and they might well sit with one another uh, in terms of sharing their discipline capability. But the the, the task is to make that feel very joined up. And, and one of the things that we really try to do is make sure that there are leaders, not just account leaders, but strategic and creative leaders uh, on any given piece of business that are 
adept at, uh, at orchestrating th th that talent to come out of its boxes and to collaborate as a, as a single entity uh, and get in a room together with, or on a screen together as it is at the moment, to get in a room together and, and leapfrog through what might have been much longer, more traditional processes, crack problems in a room. What I'd like to do, I don't know whether you're going to be prepared to commit to this, I would love to come back in 12 months time and say, <laughs> in 12 months from now, you know, have we actually delivered what we've said? How have we, you know, we as an industry shifted shape, uh, you know, and what are the new models and have they evolved significantly in terms of the way that we focus on client leaders, the way that we remove, you know, the boxes around capabilities and disciplines and the way that we think about the value model and what that actually means and that clients understand it. So I would like to say a big thank you to everybody because I think there's been some really interesting points coming through and ask for a commitment to come back in 12 months and do it again. 100% happy to Brilliant. do it. Let's do it. <laughs> Definitely. Let's do it indeed. Thank you. Thank you very much.